Hello guys and uh, welcome again to my channel. I dealt in cars for over 15 years. It's actually my passion. As you have uh, seen from the title, we are going to discuss buying a car, a used car in Kenya in 2023 and the challenges that a new owner will face if they want to buy a car. It can be an imported car or it can be a locally used car. First of all, let us talk about uh, imported cars. When we look at the challenge of importing a car today, in the year 2023, uh, because of the impact uh, brought about by COVID about three years ago, uh, production of vehicles went down, completely down. Most of the factories were closed in Japan uh, because uh, mostly in Africa we import cars from Japan. And, and that created some sort of a shortage of vehicles because production was low. So if the production is low and the demand is high, obviously the prices will go up. So that is one of the challenge that importing vehicles posed uh, to new car owners who wish to import vehicles. So because of shortage of vehicles, then the prices for any available cars automatically shot up. That is number one. Number two, the exchange rate for the dollar went very high. Even as of today, I, we have hit a high of 140 shillings per dollar. Combine that with the import cost, with the high import cost of a vehicle. A few years back, we could get a Nissan Advan at the price of $2,000, $1,800, $2,500 C and F. That is cost and freight. Today, without $4,000 or $5,000, you will not be able to get that car. So the cost aspect of just importing a car has been compounded and it's out of reach for many people. If I could bring in an, a Nissan Advan at a cost of 300000 up to Mombasa port, it was very cheap. Today, without above 400,000 shillings to 600,000 shillings, it's practically impossible to import such a car. And our market, most of the cars are in the range of between 1,000 cc to 2,000 cc. So those are small cars, mid-range cars, and SUVs. We've not even gone to the high-end SUVs like Toyota Prados, Land Cruisers, and so on, uh, whose cost go up to $20,000, $25,000. So imagine today the dollar rate is probably at 130 Kenya shillings and you want to bring in, let's say, a Toyota Harrier, which is being sold at $18,000. That is an insane amount. So what is happening is importing is basically very, very difficult. Unless somebody is very particular, they want to import their own car, regardless of how much it will cost. So that created another problem internally. Because of uh, the reduced income of imported vehicles, then the demand for locally used cars uh, uh, shot up. And that now created another challenge. When the demand shoots up and the availability is less, naturally the price is what will determine if somebody wants to get a car. So even locally available units, the prices shot up. For instance, a Toyota Paso that I could get with Kenya shillings, 300,000. Today, the best I can get for such a car is 400,000 shillings. So the prices shot up from 50,000 shillings up to 200,000 shillings for cars that you could afford previously, pre-COVID uh, time. So that is the, one of the main challenges that is facing somebody who wants to acquire or own a motor vehicle, either by importing or by buying a locally used vehicle. So that, now let us move out from the price of cars to the other local challenges that we face, again, whose prices have escalated so much because of the market imbalances as a result of the covid and other economic issues, and even especially the Ukraine-Russia war, 
has played a major role in in terms of pricing uh, economies are, have really suffered across the world you see when the price of oil and fuel is affected by such calamities we're facing then obviously the cost spirals downward uh, to the consumer when we come to locally buying cars unfortunately our market is not one of the best and we do not maintain our cars in a manner that when you're disposing the car the next person buying that car will have less issues to deal with so let us let me list down for you the main challenges one can face when you want to acquire a locally used car there are so many issues and it's very frustrating the sellers when they advertise their cars for for sale i'll say the sellers which will include the brokers and dealers they will only try to paint a picture to a buyer of how such a unit is good and unless you go to the ground which is very disappointing that is when you'll find out things that you did not know for instance you see a very nice car posted either in facebook gigi or wherever online and the pictures are very nice number one those pictures could be old pictures and do not relate to the current condition of the car so when you get to the ground from the picture you cannot determine whether it's original paint or it's repainted and most of dealers and sellers and brokers there are two statements they use number one lady owned number two original paint which is a completely lie you have to be on the ground a car that is uh, imported at an age of eight years and then it has been locally used for another five years or six years uh, so we are buying cars which are 15 years that we consider a bit newer and some cars are up to 20 years old it's very difficult for that car uh, to not to have been uh, painted at one point so when you get to the ground a car that was advertised as original paint you find it has been repainted okay it's not wrong to repaint but once a car is repainted that could mean a lot of things the car could have been involved in an accident previously uh, the car could have been affected by rust we don't know so you have to find out you have to really to find out get the reason why the car was repainted but don't always fall for the trap of original paint there is no car very few cars uh, that are 15 years and above will be having their original paint most cars will have been repainted either whole car or partially or anything like that number two mileage issue fine it's not a big deal but it's a big deal if you look at it if a car was imported uh, probably with a mileage of 100,000 kilometers and it has done 300,000 kilometers and then the mileage is clocked backwards to reflect the car probably has 180 kilometers the mileage a car has traveled over time a car that is constantly used will relate to its condition so a car that you're being told is 80 km 80,000 kilometers for instance and compared the status of the seats of the car they are torn and so on uh, the handles are not working properly they will not relate so it's very important for the buyer to verify the mileage of the vehicle there's a website uh, from, through which you can verify if you're buying a relatively new car it's always good to verify but if a car is let's say 18 years 20 years old that will not really much matter so much mileage will not matter probably that car at some point in time the engine may have been changed that is issue number two clocking of mileage it's a big problem Point number three, again, when the car is being advertised, they will tell you or they will say paperwork for transfer ready. So transfer will be immediate. On the advert, it will say transfer will be immediate. But when you get to the ground, you hear stories, start hearing stories. Uh, I bought this car, but I never transferred from the previous owner. The previous person who owned the car, again, had not transferred the car from the previous owner. That previous owner had not transferred the car from the original owner of the car. So you find out the car has changed hands about four or five times. And out of these four times or five times it has changed hands, 
none of these people had bothered to transfer the car from the original owner. So at the, with the advent of the NTSA team system, that is because it, it, it became digitized, you cannot transfer, it's not like previous times, trying to trace the original owner becomes a bit of a hassle and these guys, they want you to buy the car and make you that your problem. Do not accept. If a car is not transferred to the current person who is selling the car to you, avoid that responsibility because it will just give you headache for nothing. You might end up even doing a forced transfer, which will cost you anywhere from 10,000 to 15,000 shillings. Where else a normal transfer should cost you not more than 4,000 or 5,000 shillings. So that is another major problem that you will face the ability to transfer the car without any issues. So most people get out of the deal simply because, yes, the logbook is there, but if the person who is selling you the car is not the registered owner of the car. And again, this poses another challenge. If I'm not the registered owner of the car, what proof is there that I have the authority to sell that car to you? And this most people do not check. Most people do not bother to check whether the person selling the car to you has an agreement between him and the previous person who owned the car. And the previous person who bought the car from the original owner should provide a copy of the sale agreement to any other person who purchases that car. Because that way we are able to trace backwards to the original owner of the car. Problem number four, hidden mechanical issues. Again, if you look at the advert, a very nice line there car has no mechanical issues. And that is why it's very important whenever you're buying a used car, insist on a test drive. Most showrooms will not allow you to do that because they know what they're hiding. Obviously, a car that is 15 years old will not lack any mechanical issue. One or two issues. Some will have minor issues, others will have very major issues. But now the complexity comes here. The dealer wants to sell the car to make his cut. He doesn't care about the condition of the car. The buyer has instructed the dealer to sell the car and what he expects from the sale. So the dealer will put his markup price. So him, he doesn't care whether the car mechanically or not, whether it's okay, as long as they make their profit. So you'll find out when it comes to mechanical condition of the car, you must do a test drive. You'll realize there are some issues that will not be disclosed to you. And you must be able to thoroughly check that car. Involve a non-honest mechanic. Also include computer diagnostics of the car so that it can give you, whether it has an engine check or it doesn't have an engine check light, just do a diagnostic check of the car. It will tell you a lot of issues about the engine of the car and the status of the car. So that is another problem that a Kenyan car buyer will deal with. Mechanical issues that are not disclosed by the seller and the dealer. Problem number four, okay, brokers are good people and they help us get to, to these vehicles, but it's becoming a very big challenge. There's a long chain of brokers. One car will have about five brokers and it being a good car, probably you might want to follow up to go and uh, be able to go and buy that car. But now when it comes to paying commissions, it becomes a big challenge because if a car has a chain of three brokers or four brokers or five brokers and each broker, the minimum amount they charge is 10,000 if they get a buyer. Three people or even two people, that is 20,000 shillings. That is the broker who took you to the car. And now the brokers on the other side who connected your broker, the brokers now who have the direct connection with the owner, sometimes they also demand to be paid. So you're ending up paying about 20000 to 30000 just as commissions. So this eats into your budget. And sometimes it even becomes difficult to a point you are able to buy the car if you're dealing directly with the owner. But that is the situation because if, let's say, uh, ideally, five brokers and each broker is demanding for 10,000 shillings, that is 50,000 shillings. You have a budget of about half a million. That is 10% of the budget you have to buy a good car that you're looking for. So brokers have uh, been such a, a challenge in acquiring a car or buying a used car.